I got soaked. My first time ever at SeaWorld! Here we go, excited to share a SeaWorld adventure with you here today. Let's see what this one's all about. Right now, walking through this parking structure area, you can see kind of a beachy feel as we make our way towards that entrance. I'm excited to see what it's like here today. Right out front, SeaWorld here. You can see it's a nice view, nice sunny day. It's a little bit chilly out, but it's nice and sunny. We got a SeaWorld store back there and kind of these animated walruses here and seals of enjoying the water. Let's see what it's like in the park here today. And we are in SeaWorld. So glad to be here. Excited for today's adventure. And this trip is thanks to SeaWorld. Thank you, SeaWorld, for inviting me. Appreciate the invite and glad to be able to share today's adventures of SeaWorld with you. Now, let me give you a little bit more context on what this means. I'm an affiliate now with SeaWorld, which means I will be able to share a couple different things with you. First of all, SeaWorld adventures, obviously. And in addition, in the description of this video and any SeaWorld videos you see, make sure you check that out. If you're looking for SeaWorld tickets, you'll be able to see I've got a link there for you. You should be able to get some deals on those SeaWorld tickets. So make sure you check those out if you are considering going to SeaWorld after today's adventure. And I'm excited to share it all with you. Let's get this party started. I need to find a, a park map somewhere, but we'll do that first. One thing I know is going on today is the Seven Seas Food Festival. I've heard great things about this food festival. Lots of different flavors. And it looks like they may even have live concerts here on the weekends, which is fantastic. Nice to see, oh my gosh, blue oyster cult and that sort of thing. That's awesome. So glad to see if I can make it here for the food festival, Seven Seas. And I'm excited to check it out and let you know what foods sound delicious here today. And here is that park map. So you can see it's a little bit windy out here. It was tough for me to hold this one up, but you know I gotta check out Sesame Street land up there, Antarctica, whole bunch of cool spots. Looking forward to sharing all of today's adventure with you. Let's do it. Pretty close by the entrance. Wanted to show you one of the merchandise shops here. First time really walking into a SeaWorld merchandise shop. So sharing with you all the cute aquatic animals. Gotta appreciate those penguins. Love to see some penguins here today. I don't know if you know this, but penguins are one of my favorite animals. Love penguins. So if we see some, that'd be awesome. And you can see a whole bunch of other cool stuff going on here. Kind of plastic keychains and that kind of thing. You've got beverage containers. Ooh, look at those. Those are actually really cute with the whales and the dolphins. Kind of decorated. Oh, it's a penguin one. You gotta see the penguin one down there. Check that out. Little pink penguins on their water bottles. So merch all around for all of our aquatic friends. Very nice. So I'm thinking we start left here, kind of pin to this left side and work our way through and around so I don't miss anything. Because it looks like there's so many twists and turns on this map. I want to make sure that I catch it all. But just kind of walking this way, you immediately see in the entrance here, the Manta. I've heard great things about the Manta here at SeaWorld. It's supposed to be an amazing coaster. We'll see if we can make that one happen here today. Yes. Look at this whale photo here. I want to see if I can jump in line here for the whale photo, actually, because I feel like that'd be awesome to meet super cute Mr. Whale over there with the SeaWorld background. I was wondering what everyone was standing around here for, but then if you look closely here, you can see there's some flamingos in there. Live flamingos, quite a few of them with kind of their necks wrapped around their bodies here. Really cool to see. Maybe they're keeping warm out here. Nice. Nice to see those flamingos. Some live animals out here today. A quick pass through Stingray Lagoon here. Look at this stingray. Oh my gosh. Beautiful to see. Look at this tail there. His tail goes all the way back. What a huge stingray just hanging out here in Stingray Lagoon. And it's quite a lagoon here too. You can see it makes it quite a ways down. That's awesome. And the stingray is just kind of swimming around. Looks like people can pet them and that kind of thing. That last stingray was a huge one. Here's a little bit of smaller stingray. So it seems like they've got a variety of stingrays here in Stingray Lagoon. I hesitate to put my hand in there because, I don't know, it's scary. <laughs> it's scary. But uh, check out those birds too. Those are real in the back. They just kind of hang out back there. That's crazy. I'm doing, I wonder what they eat. They're eating some, maybe something in the water. Nice to see those stingrays and birds hanging out live here. Stingray Lagoon. All right. Now we're going to make our way over to Manta. And again, thanks to that SeaWorld team for inviting me here today. I'm excited to step on board and share with you what I heard is one of the best. I already asked the team member. He said this is one of his favorite attractions at SeaWorld. So let's see if I can figure out exactly where that entrance is and then we'll be on our way. Check out these pelicans here. Wow, they're huge pelicans. I've never seen 
pelicans quite like that. Probably some of the largest that I've seen. And some smaller ones back there, a variety of different colors. You got the whiter pelicans and those darker pelicans back there. Something attached to their noses, it looks like, for these pelicans. Maybe that's just kind of how they naturally grow is with that thing on their nose there, or their beak. But wow, awesome to see all the live animals. And there's Manta right there. So we're gonna step on board now, figure it out how to get on board. Manta has a 35 minute wait right here, warning. The attraction flying restrained position. I don't know if there's lockers or anything like that, so maybe we'll see if there's a locker option or figure out where those are. It does read at lockers, so we'll see if we can find where that is. So speak. Oh my gosh, I just got soaked from there. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. So speaking to that team member back there, it sounds like there's no lockers because uh, I don't have a bag. If I had a bag, maybe a locker. But there's a bin under my chair apparently to put some of my stuff, and this looks like it's the seating chair right here we'll see what that's like here momentarily definitely seems like an intense one so i'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts with you it's an extremely dark cube but as we're walking you can see this fish tank here ahead of us sharks fish and that sort of thing it's very very nice that water view as we are making our way i love how we are in, immersed in the world of these sea creatures here and it's a 35 minute wait we get to look at some of these aquatic tanks and see life as we are making our way another beautiful tank here as we're making our way into the attraction you can see we've got anything from sharks here to these manta rays or you know, all kinds of good stuff in there wow if you look at the bottom you can see some shark type things under there wow it's definitely quite crowded and nice to see the tank here another room another tank here you can see this kind of black stingray down there kind of looks more, almost like an eel or some sort of electric fish type thing going on up there that's really Nice to see a variety of types of fish. Wow, some fish I've definitely I've never seen and I definitely can't name for you here. But again, nice to see that variety in these tanks as we make our way onto the ride. And here we are looking at the queue here. You can see each manta there has kind of a different color to it, like a different type of manta now making our way into, looks like, right up to the attraction. And again, nice to see that setup there, those different style of mantas. The last row in the back there, here we go. Just looking at the intensity on this one, I'm in the last row. I'm thinking I'm gonna leave my uh, stuff behind on this one, Let's, uh, no loose articles. So I'm gonna leave this stuff behind and I'll tell you how it is on the other side. It looks extremely intense. Definitely looking forward to enjoying this one though, here we go. Just got off the Manta attraction. Wow, this was a really, really fun ride. I feel like I was being turned. We went upside down, not just kind of the typical way, which is that kind of rolling way, but also sort of left to right. It would spin that way. You also get lifted up at the beginning of the ride. It's like you're in a normal standing position. Your back goes up in the air. So you're kind of sitting with your back up in the air like you're a Manta with your arms hanging down there. Really, really cool setup. Really enjoyed this attraction. It is very intense. So you want to make sure you're securing those loose articles as well. And another note on this one is there's no real place to secure those valuables. So you can rent a locker for $2 for two hours. Uh, but if you've got zipper pockets, you want to maybe use those zipper pockets for renting or for making sure that your more valuable secure belongings are secure. For those looser items, they do have those little compartments in there. I just put my hat and that kind of thing in there. But for those secure items, make sure you got a friend hold on to that for you or perhaps put those in those zipper pockets. And for the wait time for Manta, I'm not sure it was a full 35 minutes. It definitely felt very quick. So I'm glad I had a chance to ride this one. Maybe it was 35, but either way, it definitely felt fast. Nice to look at those fish tanks while you're waiting for the ride. This is interesting, the all day dining deal. Eat and drink all day. Price is starting at $40 for adult. One entree, non-alcoholic beverage, and side or dessert as often as every hour. I don't think I'm gonna try that one today, but it's something to keep in mind, maybe for future adventures to SeaWorld. Sounds like a pretty good deal. Another thing to comment on here today is the crowds. It actually seems more crowded than Universal. Most of the time I'm at Universal. Seems less crowded than Disney, but more crowded than Universal, which is very interesting. Maybe just because the day is a weekend day and a busy Saturday here. So, you know, that's the way it goes, right? But here's Shamu returning to center stage. I want to see if I can get a picture with Shamu up here in front of that SeaWorld sign. Yes. All right, got my pictures with Shamu. And it seems like, interestingly, there's a couple of still friends here taking pictures with Shamu as well. Very cool. But glad I got those pictures here right by the entrance. Keep making our way around and see what's up next on the agenda. Right behind Manta is an aquarium right here. Maybe drop in there at some point. And we've got Dolphin Cove back here as well. But I'm thinking I might just make a quick loop, 
see if I can catch the most important stuff first and then make a way back around to catch the rest depending upon how much time I have here today. I'm gonna do as much as I can here in one day. So let's see how much we can get done. But it does seem like there's a lot and I'm excited to see it all. Right here is Dolphin Days, 11, 1, 2, 30, and 4. Maybe we'll come back for this. I'm not sure. It sounds like the show is full here. But maybe we'll keep making our way around, see if we can... Oh, there's a squirrel on a stroller. Uh-oh. See if we can find the dolphins just kind of in the petting zoo area. And maybe at some point we'll come back for this dolphin show. All right, I think we found the dolphin area here. You can see dolphins moving in the background over there. It looks like this one's not quite as accessible as the stingray area where a lot of that area is. I'm not sure if it's maybe reservations or just for that team member back there taking care of them. I think it is reservations because there's a booth over here in terms of inquire for pricing for a dolphin encounter. But to just be able to take the time and look at them even from the distance here is fantastic. Really amazing how they're able to bring in the dolphins here and share those sea creatures with us. And it seems like they're having a nice old time here today. They're coming up and showing their little faces as they're grabbing some brushes, breaths of fresh air over there. Here comes the dolphin kind of heading our way here. Let's see how close. Oh, look at him over there. Right by, uh, I don't know how well you can see from here. He's coming our way. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Right there. Wow, look at that. Really close to us, those dolphins. Nice to see them as they're swimming by. Behind the dolphin encounter is the dolphin overlook. We have a view, sort of an aerial view of these dolphins from up here, a larger view of their play area. Nice to see the dolphins from this elevated perspective. It makes for a nice picture. I'd love to see some come right over here in this area. They're kind of back there now, kind of closer to where we were, kind of closer to those rocks. But again, nice to see them from a different perspective. Ooh, spending a little bit too much time in the dolphin area. But here's dolphin underwater viewing right here. So we can see the dolphins underwater right under that same overlook. So maybe we'll see if we can find some dolphins under here. Whoa, ho, ho, look at these dolphins swimming around under here. Really nice to see the dolphins here underwater. Wow, you can see a lot of them swimming around there back in the distance. There was one that came really close by a moment ago. I just missed it was a little bit far back. We'll have to see if someone else swims by here momentarily. Nice open area right over here. They're having fun right over there. So let's see if anyone comes our way. Oops, here we go. Ooh, he's dragging the kind of barb over there. Look at that, they're both dragging the, uh, kind of like the bell. I'm not sure what that is. Oh my gosh. Really nice to see them from down here, kind of playing with that. Guess maybe that's a toy for them there. Wow, and they're super close by us right now. It's fantastic. I love it. Ooh, here they come. Right by us right here. Glad we get a nice close-up view of a couple dolphins right here. See if they come any closer for us. They're all over the place. That's awesome. This is the place, clearly this is the place to view the dolphins is underwater. Very clever. Obviously they have to go to the surface to breathe, but it seems like otherwise they like to just hang out down here. So very, very nice to see. Oh, hoo, hoo, look at this guy. Swimming right by us right here. I'm trying to catch some great pictures at the same time. So looking forward to sharing those with you as well. Oh, look at these guys. I love it. Looking super cute. Super cute dolphins. Look at them. They're all playing with that same thing now. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Dolphin swarm. Dolphin swarm. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Like biting each other. Wow, this is the place to see him for sure. Really glad I took the time to drop in there and see the dolphin underwater viewing. If you're looking to see some dolphins, you want to see them close up, I think that's the best bet here is if you want to catch them underwater. Because it does seem like they spend a lot of time under there just playing with their toys and that kind of thing. We're gonna keep our eyes open for other animal viewing around as well. But wow, beautiful to see those dolphins in there. Let's see what else we can find here today. So much on the map. I haven't even left this one corner of the park. Here's Turtle Trek. Right next to me is a three-part experience, underwater viewing of manatees, sea turtles, and the theater. Again, I'm, I'm pretty tempted, but I feel like I'll come back for Turtle Trek. I'm gonna keep making my way around just so I can see it all and then kind of prioritize it. Continuing our way around, we've got manatee rehabilitation right here. Look at this manatee eating this green sort of fluffy lettuce leaves here. That is actual lettuce now that I look at it. It looks like actual lettuce. They're all eating off the surface. Very cute manatees over there. And there's some more manatees on that side kind of chilling. I wonder, again, if there are different levels of rehabilitated and they're just kind of zoning their way forward. And you know, maybe these manatees need to eat a lot more and those manatees not so much, but nice close up view here of that dining experience of the manatees. Enjoy that lettuce, Mr. Manatee. Yes. 
Very helpful team members helping me understand what is where in the park, everything I want to experience. Atlantis is apparently like a log water ride, so I'm thinking I might actually catch that. It is a little bit chilly, but I think that's okay. You know, it's worth it to experience this since we're here. And he told me about all these different shows with different animals. I'm making my way around now towards what I think is the Atlantis area. I'm not 100% sure, but I may have turned too soon. Again, there's so many different winding streets here. It's easy to get lost. And he also told me those manatees can hold their breath for 20 minutes. I saw one kind of take a breath and then dive like under where we were standing. I'm like, wow, he must be able to hold his breath for a while. 20 minutes. They have a very efficient a lung sort of oxygen gas exchange as well as a very large lungs it takes up most of their body so really really cool to see and hear about and now making our way around again see if we can find atlantis see if we can find penguins penguins my favorite animal so we got to check that one out and all kinds of other cool stuff here wow look at this citadel here journey to atlantis looks like soaking wet right i saw a huge splash at the bottom and it's a beautiful building so i'm gonna see if i can make that one happen here today still trying to find my way to the right entrance here maybe it's around this far side but nice to see a closer look. There's Kraken back there. I was also told by our friendly team member here that uh, some things close earlier than others, like some of those shows. So we'll have to take a look at that and see uh, which shows we have to catch before closing. We'll have to factor that in in addition to just our priorities. But here's Journey to Atlantis right here. It says it's got a five minute wait time and that splash, that queue looks so intense and beautiful. I feel like I must do it. So let's go make it happen. All right, a five minute queue looks pretty legit here. Only a couple people ahead of us. So let's see how this one goes. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get wet. I got soaked on the Atlantis ride here and it's still a freezing cold day. It's not done being chilly out here, but I did get soaked, it was crazy intense. I really enjoyed this attraction. It was a really fun one from sort of the beginning, which kind of reminds me of like an aerial or like a, uh, what would you call it? Like a Navi River journey. There's a lot of black lights and a lot of colors, extremely colorful kind of under the sea adventure there. It's a great start to it. And then after that part, after the kind of darker black lit with all these different colors in the black light, I really enjoyed that part. It might have been one of my favorite parts. You have the Splash Mountain part where you make a huge drop and I got soaked, of course. They say really quickly before drops, hold on tight. Make sure you're ready for a sudden slowdown at the bottom, which I like so you know it's about to drop. But I was too slow to zip up my jacket. I didn't think about it. I got a little bit soaked underneath as well. But it wasn't too, too bad. And then after that was more of a kind of really dark and gloomy, ominous part of the ride. And again, a little splash after that one as well. A couple different drops. But again, they warn you every time beforehand. That first drop is like the Splash Mountain-esque drop. I like this one a lot. If you're, again, okay with getting a little bit wet if it's a warmer day and you think you could dry off during the daytime, definitely check this one out. Love Atlantis here. So far, a very fun attraction. This is the family attraction so far, whereas Manta's the intense one. Depends what kind of experience you're looking for, but both are really nice. And after getting off this one, I'm taking a closer look at the attraction right where this drop happens. Oh my gosh, I got wet from here too. That's what that splash looks like. Again, on this one, you get more wet on the ride than I did standing right here. But on Manta, I actually got more wet watching that splash part versus being on Manta. So depending upon how wet you're trying to get, get a little bit wet to maybe moderately wet while you're watching Manta versus like pretty, pretty wet on this one. It's not as wet as some of the rides I've been on uh, like at Universal. I'm trying to think of those two wet rides there. Those are more wet, but you still get a little bit wet on this one. And my next few stops here are Kraken Unleashed and Antarctica. I'm thinking Kraken Unleashed first just because we're right here and earlier in the day is usually less crowded. So let's see if we can make this one happen. And then I definitely want to check out Antarctica. You know I love some penguins. So it looks like the ride is temporarily down here, the Kraken. So maybe I'll come back to this one. You can see that it looks like they're testing it. So maybe again, just making sure it's operable and then they'll be running it again. It says zero minute wait, but again, that's because they're not running it. So I think we'll check out Antarctica and then loop back around, see if it's back open at that point. Heading from this very warm, dry climate into Antarctica, oh my gosh where it's gonna be freezing, Empire of the Penguins. There's some shows in here, maybe some live penguin viewings as well. Here's Glacier Collection, looks like a store there. Let's see what we can find in the world of Antarctica. And here we have Empire of the Penguins. I think this is an attraction here. It says a 40 minute wait for Empire of the Penguins. So, huh, let's see how that one goes. 20 minute non-rider, 40 minute rider. Let's, let's read what that's about. So we found out this is the line for the cart ride that takes you to the penguin exhibit versus that other line is just to get into the penguin exhibit. So if you just want to see penguins, 20 minute wait versus 40 minute wait to ride the ride to then see the penguins. I feel like 
you know, if it's an additional 20 minutes, may as well do it. See those penguins on the ride as well as in the exhibit. While I'm in line here taking a look at the Seven Seas Food Festival food dining options, you'll see a lot of the food is available kind of in that main walkway area where we're going to make our way after Antarctica here. I'm not too hungry yet, but I was looking at the chef's favorites, which you'll see on the next page here. And those all look really good to me. The bison, the oyster po' boy, taco al pastor, vegan ceviche maybe as well. You got the rainbow cheesecake cone. I feel like maybe I shouldn't have too many desserts. There's also an option to get the package deal. 15 food items for $67. I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it out that regularly to eat through all that food during the event here. But we'll have to see the prices when we get to those boots. But I'm definitely interested in this bison slider here. I like the look of several other items as well. You'll see as I continue to turn the pages. There's the cheese meatballs right there. Taco al pastor, chalupas, tostada. This dulce de leche empanada sounds delicious with caramel and queso. Dremel with caramel sauce. Oh my gosh. All sounds fantastic. I'm going to keep looking here and let you know what sounds best to me. But that's just to give you some insight of what I'm looking at here so far. And the chicken and waffle, of course. Gotta be looking at that. And the brisket nachos. Man, so many good options. Now in this theater leading to the Empire of the Penguins attraction. Excited to see what this show is all about. And the step on board. A few will stay behind with this anxious young couple. Time is running out for one little penguin named Puck. We're at the point where we choose the Milder Wild Expedition, and it seems like everybody's going for wild. Miles over there seems pretty open. Excited to see what this one's all about here in a moment. Look at the ice sculptures on the ceiling. Nice little show, pre-show there. Let's see how this expedition goes. In this amazing land of ice and snow, it's time to see the wonders of Antarctica. Look at this lobby lighting up here. Really beautiful design. Excited to go into the world of Antarctica here. Let's see how this one goes. So reflection in the ice. to see the penguins. Wow, looks like there's so many different types too. Look at that emperor penguin, and I think there's like some king penguin back there or something along those lines. Yeah, there's king penguin, rock hopper. I think that's what I'm seeing back there. There's a rock hopper, and I just saw him hop onto a rock. Wow, look at this king penguin right here. Looks like that's what that is. Wow. Every type of penguin imaginable right here. Beautiful to see, and it goes all the way around. Definitely gonna have to grab some pictures here for myself. I love it. Look at that. That's a unique penguin. I did a little, a little one laying down. <laughs> I love this. I'm spending a good bit of time here, although it's quite cold. Looking at all the different types of penguins, reading the story of how to raise a family back there. I'm just looking at penguins. I want to walk around and see if there's other views to look at the penguins as well. Really, really nice to see them here. There's a couple of tanks here as well. You can see the penguins ooh, swimming under the water there. Oh, very nice. As you'll see, there's no petting, no flash photography. We're good here to share the videos with you. It's nice. Again, you can see kind of what this looks like. A lot of people hang around the water tanks where you can see the penguins swimming back there as well, which makes sense because it's really cool to see. And you can see a closer look at the penguins swimming around here. Beautiful to see them under the water there. Hey, little buddy. You can see them swimming along the side. Wow, that's beautiful. They kind of have a tunnel, I guess, they can swim under. Oh, this is great. Really <laughs> freezing as well. Still freezing around here. But it makes sense. You got to keep those penguins comfortable. All right, so there they are, chilling up there on the rocks, in the water. Oh, great shot to see them all hanging out here. Just to look at them and appreciate their, their beauty. Look at this little guy. Oh, hey, little buddy. How you doing? What's going on? All right. There he is hanging out right by us. I like it. It's closer than I've ever seen a penguin before, for sure. There's some penguin sort of calling going on right now, too. This guy earlier, this kind of not king penguin. What is he, a rock hopper penguin? Was kind of making that noise earlier and they're kind of clawing or squawking at each other kind of hear some back there as well and there's some snow type stuff coming back over that way as well wow this is this is fantastic to see glad we're getting a chance to see it all here look at these automatic revolving doors here i am antarctican i heart penguins penguin power all around here wow really cool to see this kind of setup and it's much warmer in here for this underwater penguin viewing area you can see down here we can actually see the penguins swimming 
through the water and a lot of people viewing them down there as well. Beautiful to see them right behind you. Some close-up viewing of the penguins underwater. Love this. Beautiful to see. Really, really nice to see these penguins. It's tough to catch any good photos of them down here just because they're shooting around really fast. But I can video a little bit and share that with you as well. Wow. Really, really nice. All the different types of penguins. Again, some of them shoot through the water. Like, look at that guy back there. Versus these guys just hanging out a little bit nice and slower. Walking right by us. We get a good look at him. Look at this guy. Phew. Making his way around. This is awesome. This is, I'm telling you, it seems like underwater is really the place to see a lot of our animal friends here. If you're looking for some good views, definitely recommend the underwater viewing areas of so far both the dolphins and the penguins. Nice. There's like a whole bunch of them in this corner. I love it. Across from that water viewing area, another window here I might not have noticed. You can see a couple people hanging out here looking at these penguins from a different perspective. And it's a beautiful view back here as well. Really, really nice to see these penguins just kind of chillaxing back here, having a grand old time. Really, really nice. Glad I caught this one walking by. It's kind of that same take, but the far back left corner. But again, view you might not know you can see in that underwater area. Very, very nice. Really glad I had a chance to check out both the ride and the penguin viewing area on that one. If I had to pick one, it's easily the penguin viewing area, but that ride was nice too. Depending upon the wait time, I might just go for the penguins next time or I'd do the ride again, again, depending upon that wait. Now trying to make my way, I think, through the penguin area, see if maybe we can check out some of that food from the Seven Seas Food Festival. And maybe we can also check out uh, some of those other attractions. Oh, maybe Kraken is back open. So maybe I'll check that one real quick and then head this way for Mako and all those other ones. Looks like now it's only 10 and 15 minutes for the penguins so maybe I went at the wrong time but you know that's how it happens right the Kraken unleashed round two this time looks like the minutes by wait time is only five minutes so it seems like the perfect time to be at the Kraken well, let's make this one happen here today yes just about there and I'm waiting a little longer for this front row but one thing I love so far is look at this kind of ground beneath you I saw these cars come in I'm like how do they get out and then you'll see here in a minute the ground folds up. Really, really interesting to see. Before the cars take off as you're changing riders, the ground folds up so people can walk to get off the ride, and then the ground folds back in when the next vehicle takes off. Very, very cool. Only a couple more vehicles, and then we'll be on our way here. This is cool as well. You can see it kind of tracks how many seats are buckled there and how long the train has been in the station. That kind of takes off those first couple rows, so I was just testing, I guess. But cool to see that kind of set up there, and you have a conductor up top. Let's see how this one goes. I'm excited for it. Just got off the Kraken and here you can see it's pretty empty here today on the Kraken. Really enjoyed this one. I love the intensity here on these coasters. A lot like the Hulk coaster at Universal, but I feel like this one's even more intense. They've done it perfectly where I feel like a Rip Ride Rockets for me is a little bit too, I feel like insecure. You know, I feel like I'm going to fall off Rip Ride Rocket. Maybe I like the overhead strap better, you know, the, the shoulder straps like the Hulk has, but it's, it's, it's perfectly intense where it's super intense. You're on the edge of your seat. You're going so fast and you're sticking your feet out and that kind of thing, really being thrown in all kinds of different directions on this one, but it's not uncomfortably intense. I think it's a great one. If you like high intensity, thrill coasters, but don't like ones that are kind of jostle you too much, it's like perfectly consistent, smooth intensity coaster. I like this one a lot. And they're taking off again here. I, I am tempted to jump back on and run it again. I did wait for the front row last time, but I feel like I've had the chance to enjoy it at its best. But I want to make sure I see it all here today. So I'm going to keep making my way around, see what else I can find. Maybe I'll come back to this one a little bit later, though. Really glad I had a chance to check it out. Two for two on the coasters, for sure. Now, if I had to pick one between the Manta Ray and Kraken here, I feel like I want to say Manta Ray just because it's more unique. You know, I love how they kind of put you in a position. It's like on your back facing up. You're kind of hanging down over stuff. But at the same time, if you like a more traditional coaster, this is the one right here. You can see they're making their way up right now again it's like perfect level of intensity if you do like roller coasters you have to like roller coasters it's not a, i wouldn't call it a mild coaster by any means it, it is a full coaster for adults but uh, it's a great one i really did enjoy it glad we had a chance to ride it and there's so much more to see here today mako i've heard some amazing things about that's that last coaster in another part here of sea world i definitely want to check that one out as well two for two love the coasters all the rides have been great so i'm really pleased with that overall thumbs up all right and making my way out of the attraction now. It looks like I've walked into the belly of the Kraken or underneath the Kraken 
here today. And you do go into the Kraken or around the Kraken, some of the area that he is grabbing on the attraction as well. You can see kind of like that point right there. It's kind of underground at certain points. Not extremely underground, just like kind of slips underground and comes right back up. But it's like little tunnels along the way, which is a cool dynamic. Otherwise, a fully outdoor coaster. And the wait time is back up to 10 and 30 here with the, the penguins as we make our way past the penguins towards where I'm thinking is Mako and maybe the Sea Lions and Sesame World or Sesame Street, Sesame Place, something like that is still up this way, but looking forward to seeing it all here today. I want to say we're a third to halfway through the park and wow, I've had a great time so far. It's, it's a lot of fun. Pacific Point Preserve here, and you've got sea lions out there in addition to these birds. Nice to see as we're making our way towards, uh, maybe that's Kraken, maybe I need to go that way. But uh, you know, it's, it's quite a big park, a lot of different routes, kind of confusing. But nice to see those sea lions back there kind of hanging out. Sounds like a presentation on the sea lions, what they're all about here on the intercom. Ooh, some feeding going on right here. Oh, that's awesome. Seal. A harbor seal has their coating, almost like a black color, but they have these white gray patches. <laughs> and that's another way you can tell part of the camera. If you look at the California sea lion, they do have those ear flaps, but not have these ear flaps. <laughs> this guy right here is eating real well. Like a shark. Boom! <laughs> there are flippers. There we go. Oh yeah. I love how I'm standing right in the middle of the feeding corner over here. We have people feeding the animals on both sides. And we get to sit here and enjoy it. This is fantastic. The seal's right here with us. I love it. That was awesome. <laughs> he tosses the food into his own mouth. That's fantastic. Back to feeding time in this corner. This is great. I have to get to see some feeding going on here. I'm jumping in back there. This is great. I love to see this here. Wow, awesome to see that feeding here at Pacific Point Preserve. Continuing my way, you can see on the map, it's right by Kraken. It's easy to miss some of these attractions. Really, really nice. And I don't know if that would qualify as an attraction. It's funny because the lines aren't as long for the rides here because people are hanging out where the animals are, which is awesome. You can see the feeding time. You can see the dolphins or whatever else might be going on in terms of just watch them in their natural habitat, or feed them. So many cool options. Just see them hanging out and about. And that's why it seems like the ride queues are shorter but the park as a whole is just kind of more full with people watching and enjoying those animals. Now, hopefully I can find Mako, I want to say, on here is that next one. Let's see if we can find that one. And here's Sea Lion High, the new class at the Sea Lion and Otter Theater. Nice to see this here as well. Doesn't seem like there's a showtime right this moment, but maybe we'll come back for this one later as we continue to make our way towards Mako. There's so much to see. I'm telling you, so much to see and do. I'm not sure how much of it I can do here today, but I'm trying to, again, catch the highlights and share that with you. Let me know what you think. And now it seems like I'm in the area of those food stations, walking by that first food station here for picking up stuff for the special Seven Seas Food Festival. We're gonna make our way around here. I got a couple options in mind for a little bit later, but I think I'm gonna ride Mako first, you know, smarter to eat first and then, or ride first and then eat, right? I think that would make more sense. But I was looking at American, Polynesian, and Mexican markets. They all look like they had some amazing things. A lot of good options, but I narrowed it down to those three. So let's see what happens. So I found my way into the Mako queue, the world of the sharks here. Oh, sharks. And it looked like it was only a 15 minute wait. Again, it seems like a beautiful time of year to jump in line for these rides where everything is super short. But at the same time, there's a lot of people hanging out with those animals, feeding those animals. I like it a lot. I feel like it's well managed in terms of those crowds and how many people are hanging out in different places. It's a really nice feel overall to the park. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm really glad I had the chance to come here today and I'm looking forward to sharing more adventures in the future. Sharks sense motion and pressure changes in the water. We're learning about how sharks hunt here. They can see in the dark. And this cue, again, definitely makes you feel like you're immersed in the world of the sharks. It's like you are the Mako here and learning again how they hunt, what they look for, what they can see and smell and feel. Uh, really, really interesting concepts to learn while we're in line just got off Mako. And Mako was definitely a speedier ride. It went over 70 miles per hour, I read, and had a 200 foot drop. So definitely some extremely intense drops 
on that one, but there's no upside down on this one. So this one doesn't have the same upside down. You do go up and down in your seat because of the intensity of those drops and the angles at which you drop, the speed at which you drop. This had to be the fastest coaster, the most inclined drop coaster and went up the highest and lowest, I think. So there's definitely something to be said for that. But I personally, I would say I preferred the other two. Here it is passing us right now. Oh, Mako. I think I preferred the other two, but I would definitely ride this one again. If you're more of a, a speed demon, if you want to go really fast or you like those intense drops, this is a great one. I, I do think, the more I think about it, I think I like those over shoulder kind of holsters where you're kind of hanging onto those things over the shoulder. You just feel more secure versus the lap brace on this one. At first I was like, oh, it's a little bit tight, my lap brace. But then I was glad it was that tight because it feels a little bit less secure and you worry about it compared to the shoulder ones. This ride, I didn't worry about it at all because it doesn't go upside down at all. And it makes sense why they would use which one in different places. But overall, I thought this was a great ride. Definitely would do this one again. But of the three coasters, I think this one falls to the bottom of my rankings list. Again, definitely enjoyed it, loved it, would definitely do it again. But of the three, I'm more likely to pick either Manta or Kraken. For me, it's probably Manta, Kraken, Mako. But all the coasters here are fantastic. Really, really well done. This is, this is the Speed Demon coaster. If you're looking for the speed, this is the one you want. Also, if you're looking to avoid upside down, you, this might be the one you want. It's, it's probably the most mild in the sense that you don't go upside down. But again, speed is higher, so it really depends what you consider intensity too. Now I'd love to take some time to check out some of that food. I'm not extremely hungry quite yet, but it, it's about that time to eat. I wanna say it's like two-ish. So I should probably grab some food anyways and see what the Seven Seas Food Festival has to offer here today. I've seen a couple of good options. And I went ahead and got both the Taco Al Pastor as well as the Chalupa here at the Mexican market. And I've got this beautiful view behind me here as well. Great way to enjoy this food. I'm not even sure what that orange coaster is. Another one I'm gonna have to try, I guess. But this is kind of that waterfront on which the other side I have not checked out yet. So we're gonna try some food here, then we'll make our way over that way in a bit. Just finished the Tacos Al Pastor and the Chalupa Tostada here at the Mexican market at the Seven Seas Food Festival at SeaWorld. I thought it was really good. I did enjoy the food flavors, some very unique flavors to the both of those. The chalupas were the best in the middle where all of that different flavors were stacked on top of each other with that green salsa. You could taste that strong green salsa in there. And the bottom layer, there's two tostadas there. And the bottom tostada and the top tostada between them is just guacamole. And I like how they've done that too, to add that guac in there as its own layer. All those flavors were quite good, but again, that middle was the especially heavy part. So I'd love to see more of those toppings kind of all over at the top of the tostada. Really, really good. Glad I had the chance to enjoy that one. I want to give it about a seven. I wouldn't call it necessarily the best tostadas I've ever had, but again, quite good tostadas. Could definitely see myself getting those again. And for $6 here at the SeaWorld Seven Seas Food Festival, it's definitely an option. And then $7.50 for the Tacos Al Pastor. And I like the pineapple flavor in the Tacos Al Pastor. I felt like that pineapple flavor was fantastic and unique, but there wasn't enough of it. There could have been more of that pineapple flavor throughout the whole taco, in my opinion. Great snacks here, having those two items makes me feel like I'm pretty full up right now. So good quantity of food consumed. Those are 750. I feel like it was pretty good overall. Glad I had the chance to enjoy it. That's a couple of food items and we'll continue making our way around and see what else we can find maybe in the future in terms of food, whether that's today or on a later day. Now to see if I can work my way around the park kind of along this water side to get to that far side, maybe Sesame Place and Se or Sesame Street World, all that stuff over there. Let's see what we can find. Now walking lakeside down to that far side of the park. You can see that orange coaster. We weren't sure what that was earlier. As we walk over this large body of water, really nice to see they've got this kind of set up here, a large body of water kind of dividing the two sides of the parks. And I believe there's kind of like a viewing tower or something along those lines somewhere along this track as well. Oh, maybe that's it. I don't know if that's an attraction, but if it is, maybe it's one we can figure out how to get on later. But for now, let's just make sure we catch those highlights and we'll figure it out as we go back. So I've got a couple guesses here for this orange coaster. Looks like it could either be Icebreaker, which is opening in spring, because it looks like maybe there's some construction going on, or, or maybe not. Or maybe this is Infinity Falls, which I also heard was closed. Uh, so we'll have to maybe see if we can walk by that one, figure it out, but I, I don't necessarily think it's open. I don't see anyone on it or anything along those lines, but still nice to see here. And Seven Seas, look at that. Maybe that's the Orca encounter. That'd be really cool if that's the theater for that. So we'll have to see if we can make our way over there as well. No, no, actually, I think that's the Bayside Stadium, and ahead of us should be the Orca Encounter as soon as we get off the bridge. If I'm looking at the map correctly, we should have the Orca Encounter kind of just through here. And then that over there must be, uh, I'm not sure, Wild, Wild Arctic or something? So yeah, I think this is probably Icebreaker opening spring, followed by the Bayside Stadium right there. Orca Encounter here starts in about an hour, it looks like. 
So maybe we'll make another lap back around in a bit to catch Orca Encounter. Maybe let's see Sesame Place. I think that might be nice to see. In the meantime, I'm not sure if I can go up this way to get there, but we'll find out. It, is it weird that I'm excited for Sesame Street Land? I can see Sesame Street Land now just through these trees. It seems like there's more live music going on throughout the park, which is very nice, some shows and that kind of thing. But excited to step foot in Sesame Street Land as we're enjoying our afternoon and then we'll go back catch Orca Encounter. There's so much to do, so little time. I gotta get back to Turtle Trek later. That viewing tower, oh my gosh, so much to do. All right, welcome to the brand new Sesame Street Land here at SeaWorld. You can see we've got Elmo and friends welcoming us in and all kinds of fun play areas around here. Ooh, look at that swinging flower thing up there. I'd love to ride that. Something tells me that some of these kids might, some of these rides might be designed for kids only or parties with kids included. But nice to just walk through the area as well and see what it looks like. Let's take a closer look over here. So this is Abby's Flower Tower right here. You can see we've got the safety instructions printed right here in front of us. Groups must be at least 42 inches tall or accompanied by an adult. So it looks like you can ride this if you are just an adult. So I might do it. Now there were kids in a lot of those other areas with the animals and that sort of thing. If you're looking for where the highest majority of kids are in SeaWorld, it seems like it's right here in Sesame Street land. Uh, it's, it's definitely nice to see that there's opportunities for everyone to enjoy SeaWorld. Check out the view from beneath Abby's Flower Tower here. I feel like you're gonna get some great views of the park from riding on this one. I definitely love the views of the park on those coasters. I feel like you'll probably get some great ones of Sesame Street Place or Sesame Street Land here on this attraction. And here it goes again, taking off. I didn't realize how long I'd be waiting for this one. So I'm thinking I'll just do a quick run of Sesame Street Land here after this ride here and make my way over to that Orca Encounter show later today. But nice to be able to see it, but it definitely takes a while to get through some of these ride queues. Seems like slower moving queues than you'd expect. And there's no wait times listed, I feel like, for these rides. At least I didn't see one when I came on to this one. Now seated on the attraction here, Abby's Flower Tower. And I was, again, not expecting the wait time to be as long as it was. It seems like it was like half an hour for this one. So we're gonna definitely have to head over to Shamu after this to see that Orca encounter. But it'd be nice to get up in the air and see what this one looks like from the aerial perspective. So don't get thrown off on this one. If you see the line is only like two sort of turns deep, it seems like each of those kind of line lengths is like 15 minutes, so something to keep in mind on this one. That being said, I'm definitely ready for an aerial view of Sesame Street Land. Over there, there's a really cool looking Oscar the Grouch ride with a little worm on it. And there's so much more to see in Sesame Street Land. Again, we'll have to come back after the Orca encounter, but there's so much more to see, so much more to do in so little time. The turtle trek still has to happen. I want to do that Sky Tower as well. And I think there's some stuff going on tonight as well for the Seven Seas Food Festival. So we'll see how that goes. And here we go. Up in the air, making our way up now. Here we go. Ooh, and you can spin in circles on this one in addition to getting raised up. Can't quite figure out how to turn. There we go. So it gets a little bit harder to turn, but you can turn the vehicle as you're making your way. Get a little bit dizzy and spinny up here. All right. And there's our aerial view behind me now. I like it. Nice to see everything going on in the park this time. I feel like it's tough to spin this wheel in the same direction because when we start spinning one way, it kind of wants to take you back the other way when you spin it. So <laughs> pretty difficult to do, but we're trying. And there is Sesame Street land from a distance, from the sky. Oh, look at this tree over here too. Bright yellow tree right behind us. A really nice view across the park. Oh, look at that Cookie Monster ride. That one looks great too. I hadn't seen that before, except from way up here. And I'm figuring out the trick on spinning this one is you have to go back and forth. So depending upon which way you're going in the vehicle, if you're going one way, you turn it this way towards you and the other way, you push it away. At least it seemed like, now I can't really spin it anymore. Maybe because we're on the way back down, but fun attraction. Definitely designed for younger ones. Definitely less intensive of an attraction, but it is a fun one. Now we're spinning around as we're making our way down. Again, nice to be able to experience this one. If you like a nice view, a more mild ride, um, but the crowd's definitely something to keep in mind, how long that line takes. This line's probably gonna be, I wanna say like 45 minutes. At least that's what it felt like when I was in line. And something else interesting observation here is this one also said, make sure loose articles are stowed away. So I asked the team member here just to make sure that I could video on it. He said, yeah, just make sure you keep a firm grip on it. So maybe that's the memo for all the other rides as well is all the ones that said loose articles aren't permitted for videoing purposes. I'm thinking in the future, I could just hold on to it and share those attractions with you. Just hold on to it tightly. A little bit tricky on those roller coasters because they're really intense, but good to know for the future. And take a look 
at what we're seeing in the Sesame Street land. There's that ride we saw up there, Oscar, and further back this way is Cookies. Again, we're gonna have to come back for this because I wanna make sure we catch that Orca show. So we're gonna head over to that Orca show now, and then we'll come back for some more Sesame Street land. You can see the crowds are forming around the Orca encounter now. Plenty of people walking into those aisle sections. So I'm glad I'm making my way in now. It's about 30 minutes before the show time. So let's get in there, find a great seat, and then enjoy a fantastic show. So we've got our seats for the show. It's definitely crowded in here. And not only am I seated, but I'm also in the soak zone here. Okay. Might get soaked on this one. We'll find out after this show, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it. I've heard this is one of the best in terms of shows. Lots of people recommended this one. I'm so excited to see it. Let's see how it goes. Really cool to see this ocean trivia here. You can see they're asking these different questions and people are raising their hands in the air. It gives you a 10 second countdown and then you'll hear people react to whether or not they got the question correctly. The screen will show you by sort of rapidly circling whichever one it is. So take a look at this when it uh, starts circling that answer right there. You can hear the whole audience reacting a little bit. That answer is awesome. And of course, they've got concessions they're selling here as well. Blankets, snacks, cotton candy, caramel corn, all kinds of great stuff going around here. Definitely looking forward to the show. Nice to see the setup they've got in place for us to enjoy it in. I've moved up a bit here to try to get the best possible view to share with you. I'm in the second row now. I'm definitely worried about the splash zone here. Let's see how wet it gets, but you can see what we're looking at right now. Kind of film welcoming us into the show. I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what this world is all about here. They are not kidding about this splash zone here. 
in the Orca Encounter. Really great show though. Glad we had a chance to see this one, see those killer whales performing live, do some amazing tricks, and interact with guests as well. Really, really did enjoy this one. But if you're worried about getting soaked, make sure you sit further back. Definitely a great show, and I'd love to check out the others in the future as well. I think it's a little bit too late in the day to catch the dolphins or anything else, but this was definitely an inspiring one. And I'm, I feel like my favorite so far though was that sea lion feeding, or maybe the penguins, just because I feel like the sea lions were right in your face eating that food, and the penguins, I love penguins, so. But I love the orcas here as well. All great shows.